Welcome to the Cosmic Collective Podcast. I'm your host and psychic medium, Mads, and in this community, we talk about all things spiritual awakening, higher consciousness, and unlocking the path back to your soul. Welcome to the Collective. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. We're here for our 24th episode That is insane to me that we have been doing this together for six months. Absolutely wild to me. I'm excited for today's topic. I think it's something that we need to talk about because I think that there can be a little bit of confusion around, you know, this whole understanding of the ego and what its purpose is and you know, there's a lot of negative talk about the ego and I kind of want to dive into that and chat with you about it and explain what the purpose of the ego is once you've awakened. Um, and I think just given the poll that I put out last week, which thank you so much if you're on my Instagram and you submitted your responses to the wounds and triggers that you struggle with, I was looking into this for research purposes. Um, If you don't know, I do a lot of research and I like to do research in my collective and I also just do a lot of like channeling research and reading and things like that. I really like to get a really well-rounded view of, well, maybe not view, but maybe view and understanding of what is going on whilst in the human condition. And there are common wounds that I have seen as a coach with my clients that affect all clients and they really do affect the entire human collective at large and those wounds are typically like abandonment wounds, control wounds, rejection wounds, and external validation wounds. So I kind of want to somehow pull that into the conversation today. I don't have a very structured set of points that I'm going to be talking about. I'm just going to freestyle it because from what I've heard from you guys, you guys kind of like when I just go on tangents and it's not like overly structured. And to be honest with you, as a divine feminine, I quite prefer the flow of that. So let's get into it. And hopefully today you'll learn how to better care for your ego and understand their role in your life. So first thing is, what is the ego? Ego is just the translation of identity. So it's your third dimensional consciousness. So you exist across several dimensions, at least across five dimensions. Some people have evolved to the seventh dimension, the eighth dimension, the ninth dimension. I haven't met anyone who's ascended to the tenth dimension, not personally anyways, so I don't know how possible that is. I know that um, prophets were the ones who, when they came, had come from the tenth dimension, so, or like the ninth, they were ascending to ten, but I think they came from ten. From my understanding, they came from ten. Um... So that's kind of the gist of it, but you exist across several dimensions. You are a multidimensional being. And if this is confusing for you, go back into one of our earlier episodes where we talk about the dimensions. I think the title of the episode is Ascending Through the Dimensions of Consciousness. It will give you a better understanding of this. This is kind of like an extended, detailed spinoff of, you know, going into a particular dimension and what it means. So On Earth, we live in the third dimension. And as we know, Earth left the third dimension in 2012, and we have been traveling through the fourth dimensional uh, vortex, I guess, the fourth dimension um, together as a collective, which has caused a lot of parallel timelines, reality shifts, Mandela effects, and a lot of collective healing. So, In this collective healing, there are a lot of people who have already ascended to fifth dimensions, the fifth dimensional space of consciousness, people who have gone even higher up, and there are people who are inevitably still quote-unquote stuck in the third dimension. 
So the third dimension, like we said, it just means identity. That's where your ego lies. So if you think about where your solar plexus is um, in the center of your stomach, uh, kind of like if you feel your last rib and you point inward from like the, the joining or the separating of your last ribs um, and you point inward above your belly button, that's where your solar plexus is seated and this is the third dimension it's your third dimensional sphere of consciousness within your energy body this is what allows you to be different than uh, a dog who doesn't necessarily recognize that it has its own identity more on that maybe in another episode but the purpose of the ego in its most simplistic form is truly just to give you that sense of awareness that you are a sovereign being. You are an individual fragment of source consciousness. That is all it is. That is the sole purpose of third dimensional consciousness, of the ego. Now, you might be wondering, okay, well then why do we often talk about killing off the ego, ego deaths? You are going to go through an ego death in your spiritual and kundalini awakenings. This is because we are at a point, every single human on the planet with no exception, has been living in wounded ego and has to move out of wounded ego. And that's what spiritual guides are here to teach you is how to move out of wounded ego because we've moved out of wounded ego ourselves. For the most part, there are still, um, you know, we're still human at the end of the day. Sometimes that third dimensional part of consciousness can um, kind of come back in a, in a bit of a frequency that is stressed or frustrated or impatient and it needs reminding similar to the inner child. It needs reminding that all will be well. So when we talk about these ego deaths, we're actually talking about in a, in a way, it's not really killing off the wounded ego. It's about allowing it to heal and then integrating the healthy ego. The wounded ego is someone who is only focused on the material world, has wounds that they are not even aware of. Someone who has not gone through any part of their awakening is not going to acknowledge their wounds Sometimes they will recognize that there are wounds there, but they won't acknowledge what they are because that would be too painful. And the ego is conditioned in that sense to feel as though remembering, diving into those wounds, those pains, those emotions will put it at risk. It will put the human being at a risk of not being safe in one way or another, whether that's emotional or physical or spiritual or whatever the ego is fearing. So whenever you go through your spiritual awakening, um, the second and third phase is really about becoming aware of what your ego wounds are and really working through them. And what you're going to see and come to understand is that everything that your ego is struggling with is because there is a deeper wound in your inner child that caused your ego to program itself on the polar opposite end. So for example, you might have been severely bullied or mentally abused whenever you were a child, when you were like younger than eight, eight or nine years old. And you were made to feel inferior. You were made to feel like you weren't good enough. You were made to feel like you needed to be somebody else to be accepted. You just weren't good enough the way that you were. And people made you feel that that was not good, that who you were wasn't good. That's the inner child wound. The inner child then feels this rejection, this pain, this fear, this sadness of not being understood or accepted. But then... The ego takes on the wound of the belief, I cannot be who I truly am. I must become someone else. I must become someone that is approved by the people around me, by society. And this is is often where the wound of external validation comes in. Every single human struggles with this wound. It's this need 
to get permission and approval and validation from the people and the things outside of you to know what your course of action should be or who you should be or the decisions you should make or the job you should take or the school you should go to, the program you should enroll in. And the the problem with this is that you're not being who you are. You're The compass of your life does not lie outside of you. It lies within you. There is nothing outside of you that can guide you the way your own heart can and will. And so these are the parts of the ego that get quote unquote killed off. And the, the reason we say it's an ego death is because that part of your consciousness, that wounding, the wounding is going to die because it's going to get healed and it will no longer exist as a wound. It will heal into light and you will integrate that light after working through your own inner darkness. You will transform it, alchemize it, transmute it into light and you will become a higher version of yourself. Now, When you do this over and over and over and over and over again with every wound you've ever experienced in this life and you'll have to do it for like multiple times for one wound. You don't just get to be aware of a wound and then move on from it. It takes so much consistency of literally working through the wound. I think I talked about this last week or I said it somewhere like awareness isn't shit without action. So just because you're aware of your wounds doesn't mean you're working through them. So you will have to work through these wounds again and again and again and again with patience, with compassion, with love for yourself for you to be able to ascend to the next dimension of consciousness. And as you heal and as you focus on nurturing yourself and transcending these wounds, you'll be in the fourth dimension of consciousness. And this is so often when people will shy away and turn back from their awakening. They'll get a glimpse. They'll get a very small dose of how much pain is within them and they'll run from it because there's programming around feeling pain as well of actually facing your fears and your emotions and your trauma and all the things that you have repressed within your mind, your heart, your body, your soul. And so it's important that in that fourth dimensional sphere, you continue to work through what you are coming to face with. Just because you're aware of it doesn't mean that you're going to awaken. It just means you're aware. And this is something that a lot of what some people might refer to and what I would refer to as like fake woke people, fake woke TikTok, is people who have had this one taste of self-awareness And they think that they are these spiritual gurus. Now, of course, I'm not saying that they're not meant to be guides. That's not it at all. But you can very much tell a spiritual guide who needs to continue their own healing before giving guidance. And a guide who has transformed, I'd say like at least like 85 to 95 percent of themselves and is at the tail end that they're just kind of cleaning up when it comes to their own healing. So it's really important to use discernment whenever you're getting information, especially online information and you're listening to people. Always listen to your gut and always listen to your gut because if you look outside of yourself for confirmation, you're trying to work through that external validation wound. So just keep that in mind. Now, I have also seen online where people say, that you need a healthy dose of ego to have a human experience. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that because the whole point of being a soul, having a human experience, is to return to oneness. Now, of course, this is going to look different depending on the lifetime that you're in. But to me, the idea of a healthy dose of ego, it it's almost like this, like, It sounds kind of self-righteous, I find, of like saying, well, I'm allowed to be semi-ego driven because I'm having a human experience. I I feel like that is such a, a lack of understanding of what it means to actually have a human experience. You're always going to have an ego. The difference is that when you're fully awakened, 
when you're healed, your ego does not rule your perspective. Your ego does not rule your actions or your desires or your direction in life. It is simply the sole purpose of the ego when you have fully awakened and healed yourself is to just allow you to know that in this lifetime, for this, for the, the terms of this incarnation, you are a sovereign being. That is literally all the ego is meant to do in this lifetime. It's just for you to say, hey, I am a different physical person than you. However, I also know that we all come from the same source. We are all one. That's the difference. Even in the higher dimensions, when you incarnate in the fifth dimension, the seventh dimension and beyond, you still have an ego, but let's say you exist in the seventh dimension. Your ego is four dimensions, quote unquote, below you. It's not actually below you physically, but it's four layers deep into yourself. In, in this life, people are living in the ego rather than allowing it to be a part of them. Kind of like how we talked about in the Dimensions episode, the Russian dolls. Imagine there are seven of those Russian dolls, like there's seven different layers of it. The first layer is the first dimension, which is how you create your body as a fetus. The second dimension is your inner child, who you are up until about five, six, seven years old. And then that third layer of the dolls is your ego. It's what allows you to be an independent human being. But as a human collective, we are expanding our consciousness to go beyond that, to move through the fourth dimension of linear time and to become something bigger than ourselves, to return to oneness. Now, the fifth dimension is not the return to oneness. The return to oneness is the seventh dimension. I've been seeing a lot of that online too, where people are saying in the fifth dimension, there is no duality. That is factually incorrect because the sixth dimension your third eye is when you release duality and to live in oneness you must get to the seventh dimension your crown chakra so it's quite a bit different however i will say that in the fifth dimension in your fifth dimensional reality here on earth and in other fifth dimensional realities in the galaxy duality exists but it exists in a very different way than how we um, experience it here on earth because you can see it very clearly and it's it's just quite a different it's it's a bit more chill is kind of how I want to put it it's definitely a bit more chill but this whole understanding of the ego it's not about not having an identity it's about releasing all the wounds that you attach to as an identity and some of you who are evolving into the fifth dimension you're gonna still remain pretty centered on like this is my identity on a fifth dimensional scale but for those of you who might be ascending to the seventh dimension in this reality you're going to feel a lot more like source a lot more like the universe a lot more like your soul rather than a human identity and you'll you'll know where you stand on this because you'll just have this innate knowing like if you've been around the block here on earth several times you'll know what dimension you're ascending to and it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day you're gonna get there at some point in your incarnations and at some point in time but either way there needs to be this shedding of the wounded ego and that release of materialism that release of the external world now When I say the release of materialism, I don't mean the release of wanting nice things because whenever you release your wounded ego, you want nice things for completely different reasons than your ego would want nice things. So if you want more of a conversation on that, I had a guest, Mimi, on the podcast a few weeks ago and you can go and listen to the conscious conversation we had about that and how there's more than one way to be spiritual but it's that this desire for nice things comes from a very very high level of consciousness and there is this sense of being completely fulfilled without material things anyways but having the means to invest in them because you've gotten to that point in your manifestation and co-creation abilities I hope this is making sense so far it's definitely like more of like those free-flowing episodes that have Um, an interesting sense of direction 
but I just kind of wanted to talk about that because I know everyone will struggle with their ego. I even was talking um, with Ben Harris on live last Friday about how my ego has been, um, some wounds have been kind of resurfacing since my TikTok went a little bit uh, on the wrong quote-unquote side of TikTok um, a couple of weeks ago and it brought up some of these past life, sorry, there is a plane flying by. Please get used to this. I love having doors and windows open because I'm stuck in the winter five months of the year. So, um, but I was telling him that, you know, my, my ego has this fear of losing everything, of not being supported by the universe and it's not something that I believe and it's something that even my ego knows is not true but this deep innate fear comes up and you might wonder okay but if it's past life wouldn't that be your soul fearing it and I want to clarify that for you curious minds that no it's not it's your ego because your ego is the same no matter where you incarnate Um, your first through seventh dimension or first through whatever dimension you've ascended to all those dimensions of your consciousness are always with you when you leave this life when you come back into another life when you incarnate in another planet in a higher dimension you will always have all of those russian dolls so to speak you are always the outermost layer of the russian dolls and you always contain the innermost layers of your consciousness your consciousness doesn't change in that sense it just evolves and expands and gets bigger and more knowledgeable and it gets to higher dimensions higher awareness each time ideally anyways and so whenever you incarnate on the earth especially Your ego is the same ego you had in your last life and in the life before that and in the life before that and the life before that. And why is that? Because ego is simply identity, the awareness of being sovereign. That is literally all it is. I cannot stress this enough because there's such misinformation that goes around that I want to be so clear on its function and its purpose. And so whenever I died in my last two lives I remember those like I have those memories yes because of how much my soul has ascended through the dimensions but the fears that come from those lifetimes more specifically my most recent one is because my ego went fucking through it in my last life Uh, it was really really hard it was traumatizing I knew what I was getting into on a soul level in this lifetime that I chose to incarnate in and when I got to that lifetime it was absolutely brutal and it scarred my ego it really scarred that identity piece for me and it's a wound that was so ingrained into my consciousness that I've been having the nightmares have stopped thankfully since I was able to piece everything together but I had nightmares from the time that I was about almost five years old until I was uh, almost 22 or almost 23 years old at the exact same time of the year, every single same time of the year, the same month, every year, I had the same nightmares for like several days. It was about like a three week period. Oh my God. Sorry. That was a confirmed download for me. Wow. Okay, I will share that in the episode where I talk about my past lives and like remembering what death was like. Um, but wow, that who? Oh my god. Anyways, I did not expect that. But I would have these nightmares every year for that same you know two to three week period, and then it would go away for the rest of the year. And I. Every, every year I had it, it was like something was getting added on to the dream. I was remembering more and more. And then I started just remembering the lifetime consciously. And whenever I understood fully what I was experiencing, a lot of grief um, came, came through with that. I think, you know, like remembering your past lives, it's not, 
I think people think of it as like, oh, this is going to be so fun. I'm going to remember who I was in a past life. And if you had a good past life most recently, it is going to feel really great. But most of us have come back. If you've come back to the planet, the majority of people have come back to the planet because they're clearing karma from past lives. And, uh, you know, my ego understands at this point, you know, why I chose that lifetime and why I incarnated and what my mission was and what my purpose was. And she is at peace with the choice that our higher part of our consciousness made, right? That the choice I made as a soul that I remember making, I remember planning and designing and committing to, but my ego, that, that deeper wounded part of my ego remembers the, the literal torture of, of this past life. And in a way, although I also have memories of being supported by the universe, by my soul, by my spirit team throughout this, you know, horrific part of my earth journey, it's still something that comes up every now and again and is something that I have to consciously work through and remind myself of like, I'm not in that lifetime, I'm in this lifetime and really learning how to navigate that distinction of I am not that identity anymore that is not happening to me we are not in that space in linear time we are in a more progressive space in time so if you have these weird phobias these weird fears that don't come from this life it's because they're deeply ingrained in in your ego consciousness from past lives and somewhere where you can look in your astrological birth chart i recommend looking at the 360 degree version the circular version um, not just the co-star version because it won't have that on there is to look and see where chiron is in your birth chart chiron is going to be um it's an asteroid so is it chiron's a comet i think lilith is an asteroid chiron's a comet um you're going to look where Chiron is. It's a little circle with a little K at the top. And you're going to want to see what house it's in and what sign it's in. And these are going to tell you a lot of things about um, how your past lives are affecting you and maybe your ego, what your ego is still holding on to and what cycles you can expect to re-experience in this lifetime to break free from and learn those lessons. I also offer a past life um, session as well so i'll link that below if you guys want to check it out don't forget to use your code um, to get a discount i'm not sure what the code is i can't remember what i activated it as but it'll be in the description as as it usually is so anywho my point is that whenever you're going through your spiritual awakening in this lifetime you are going to have ego deaths you're going to have a few of them because you're going to have an ego death for every wound you've experienced And most times you'll have a really, really big ego death where you face all of them. And then you'll have like these like little mini ones. The way that they're showing it to me is like you get the big donut, you get one really big donut, and then you get mini donuts after that. And they get a lot easier to work through because you can understand when they're kind of, you can sense them oncoming um, just because your triggers will kind of be a little bit more, um, heightened and easier to trigger than whenever you're not having a little bit of a mini ego death again and to remember that the purpose of your ego in this life as you spiritually awaken is simply to allow you the understanding that you are a sovereign being it is it has literally no other role literally no other role I find the best way to incorporate my healthy ego into my life is I let her help me choose human things because your ego will be that more like human part of yourself being that for so long we've existed in the same physical third dimension where our egos were so dominant and we are now showing our egos that our egos are not actually in charge. There is more awareness, a higher part of our consciousness that is in charge of us and The ego doesn't like losing this control at first, but once it hands it over to your higher self and you become your higher self and your ego stops trying to drive the car, it actually feels such a sense of relief of not needing to figure everything out that it cannot comprehend in the density of this planet. And 
that's where your higher self and becoming your higher self becomes so, so, so beneficial. So one thing I find super helpful is to let my human self, my ego, my healthy ego, pick up my human things. What do I want to wear today? What do I want to eat for breakfast? You know, how do I want to move my body today? I let my ego choose those things because I want her to feel like she is, because she is, she's still a part of my consciousness. She's just a quote unquote lower part of my consciousness. She's just deeper into the layers than I am. And so I like to allow her that kind of free reign over those things um, so that she feels like she is still active in this physical reality, being that we do live in this like third, fourth dimension of earth. And even though her and I and all parts of my consciousness are living in in the 5D earth already and we're here and, you know, we're anchoring that our physical reality is not holographic yet. It's still third dimensional because where the collective is at, it's going to take so much time. So I really let her excel in those things. And we have found such a beautiful balance of that where she's like, nope, that's your issue. And I'm like, nope, that's your issue. And we kind of joke around like that. Um... If you're wondering, you know, well, how do you have a conversation with your ego? It's because whenever you are in your higher dimensional self, when you're in a higher state of consciousness, your other lower parts of your consciousness can speak to you just as your higher self, who you receive guidance from, speaks to you. So you will always be somewhere in the middle and you'll have your next dimensional self speaking to you, giving you higher guidance and your lower dimensional selves letting you know what their needs are and what they need from you. And so that's like a really cool way to go about it. I have a contemplation meditation that is really great for connecting you with your ego. So I will link that below as well. I think it's like $11 and 11 cents Canadian currency. And again, you can use your discount from the podcast on that purchase as well. I think you get like 15% off or 10% off or something. So you can use that and see what I'm talking about. You'll see how you can work through some of your fears. But yeah, at the end of the day, all I wanted to convey here is that your ego is just your identity. It's just you being able to say, hey, like I am an individual person in this life experience and to allow yourself to heal the wounded parts of your ego so that you can continue rising into higher dimensions of consciousness and really detach yourself from being separate to source, separate from your soul. You just are your soul and the more that you heal your ego, the more you will feel and reconnect with your soul, your higher self, because you will become them on a very high awareness kind of level and your ego will just become the one of the younger children within your own consciousness, kind of like the inner child but like an older version of it. Often, um, I see a lot of people mention this, healing your inner teenager your inner teenager would be your ego not necessarily your inner child who is younger than nine years old so you'll be able to be more of like a parent to them because you're going to learn how to reparent yourself from this higher perspective uh, being your higher self and you're really going to recognize that your healed ego is so deeply connected and trusting and feels like your higher self is a role model than your wounded ego ever feels because the wounded ego feels disconnected from source it feels alone in this experience it feels like it doesn't know its own soul its own self it it just is confused and trying to control things to understand itself so that is the little tidbit of information that i wanted to share with you this week and i will see you in the next episode next week I believe, not next episode, but I think the week after, we have a guest who is going to be joining us, and I'm very, very excited for that. I'm really loving having guests on. I really want to try and have one like every month or so, and I've got a couple lined up for us for the rest of the summer, and if there's any guests that you want to see, um, please send us a DM or send an email. Um with the link below and I would love to consider some of your recommendations for who you would like to hear me have a conscious conversation with 
and I hope that you learned something about the ego today. My voice, it's a shorter episode today just because my voice is, you can probably hear it at this point, it's getting very scratchy. I was away this weekend and I spent some really great time, some quality time with my entire family and let's just say it was a very interesting Saturday. It was a very interesting day and I laughed and talked so much and it was just a time and a half and I literally lost my voice by the end of the night and uh, I'm still recovering from that. So I will talk to you guys about that in maybe next week's episode. We'll talk about what's been going on in my personal life and things like that. I don't really know what we're going to talk about next. I'm kind of just freeballing it. I'm so in my feminine, you guys. I... I'm working on projects that are taking like a little bit more of my masculine energy, which I love when it comes to the podcast and like a couple other things right now. I'm just really enjoying flowing with it and like hopping on the day of and recording the episode. I do have pre-planned episodes. I have episodes that are pre-recorded, but I do like kind of hopping on also and being like, no idea what I'm talking about today, but here's like a random tangent. I hope you learned something. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you do have any questions about the ego and you want us to go into this a little bit more in depth in another episode, please, please, please send me a DM. Please let me know. I'm happy to go into this in as much detail as you guys would like. And of course, if you could please, please, please leave a review of the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to this podcast, I would really appreciate it. It really helps get our community out and in front of other people who are looking for this kind of information, this support, and this community to help them through their earth journey. So please, if you can, take just a moment to give the podcast a star rating. I would so, so, so appreciate it. I would love to see like a dozen reviews by the end of the summer. That's kind of my goal that I'm putting out there. So I would love to hear what you have to say. And I will link everything that I mentioned below, the past life reading, the ego meditation it's called a contemplation meditation really helps you understand your limiting beliefs and your ego's wounds and I also actually have my blog I recently posted another um, excerpt on my blog about how I got to this point in or how I got to creating my business more so like the journey that led up to Mads Mess being founded in January of 2020 So I will link that below for you to read as well in case you would like to get to know me a little bit more. And I will see you in the next episode. Go be your divine self this week. I love you. You got this.